Hi, this is Molly, your host of Science From Home with Spokane County Library District. And we're back with another fun experiment for this week. We're gonna be exploring Newton's laws of motion by making a very, very simple version of something called Newton's cradle. If you're not sure what a Newton's cradle looks like, it looks something like this. The materials you'll need for this week are a old school wooden ruler that has a ridge down the center. This experiment works best if you're able to find a ruler that does not have these binder clip holes. Unfortunately, this is all I could come up with. You're also gonna need some marbles. I have a bag here, but if you can find at least five, that'd be super helpful. And if there is absolutely no way you can come up with a ruler, then you can make a track for the marbles using a piece of paper. All right, um, because I have both a ruler and the paper available to me, I will demonstrate it in both. Uh, so I have five marbles sitting on my ruler here. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is, I have four marbles lined up in a row, and I have one marble off to the side. What do you think will happen if I roll this marble into the four that are sitting here? Uh, take a moment to just shout your answers at the computer. Uh, do you think they'll all roll away? Do you think this marble will stop? when it hits them. What do you think? So let's see what happens when I roll one marble toward the four in a row. One marble rolled away. Let's see if it's the same here in the paper. I've got one marble. One marble rolled away. So, what is your best hypothesis for what will happen if I roll two marbles? Let's see if I can do this. Two marbles rolled away. Let's see if it happens here in the paper. Well, two marbles did roll away. So what we're witnessing is some of Newton's laws of motion in action. Do you remember that fancy Newton's cradle I showed you at the beginning? If you watch it, when one marble strikes, the end one that's opposite of it moves, just like in our experiment. So like I said, we're here today to talk a little bit about Newton's laws of motion. And what's super cool about Isaac Newton is he was a very smart man that came up with a couple of ideas. Now in science, it's really, really hard to be certain of anything. Scientists have ideas and then they test the ideas and they might work, they might not work. People could come along in 10 years and decide, oh, we thought this worked, but it really doesn't. Here's a new idea. They're always coming up with new hypotheses, new guesses, new ideas, new understanding. But with Newton's laws of motion, no one has been able to disprove his ideas yet. We think that they are true, which is, like I said, really challenging to do in science. So his first law says that an object in motion will stay in motion and an object at rest will stay at rest and un unless acted upon by another force or an external force. Do we see that here? I think we do see that. So we have five marbles on a ruler and five marbles on a piece of paper. And 
right now, they're not doing anything and they're not gonna go anywhere unless I make them go somewhere. So I hit a marble and it starts to roll. The, the marble stays at rest unless I touch it and it stays moving unless it hits something else. It hits these other marbles and that's what makes it stop. You might say, well, no way, Librarian Molly. This marble, it would have stopped eventually, even if it didn't hit these other marbles. And that's true, it would have just run out of steam, but there are other external forces working on this marble besides me, things like gravity, that will help make the marble stop. But in Newton's theory, as soon as the marble starts rolling, it will continue to roll in a straight line until it hits something. Newton has another law of motion and it says, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. When I roll one marble, how many marbles roll away? Let's see. Just one. What happened when I rolled the two marbles? How many marbles roll away? Two. Let's see if it works here. So for every action, rolling one marble, there is an equal and opposite reaction one keeps, one rolls away, and the opposite one rolls away. And for two, two. You might be wondering how this works, and it has a lot to do with the energy transfer Transfer we talked about in the, the two ball experiment that I did last week. Um, when the ball, start, when the marble starts to move, it, it gains, it has kinetic energy. And when it hits this marble, the energy moves from the one that was rolling to the one it hits. But you're, you might say, but that marble stays in place. It does, because that energy keeps moving in a straight line from the, the first marble to the next and then it moves into the next and to the next. And finally it gets to the last marble and there isn't anywhere for this, the energy to go now. Like the energy doesn't, there isn't another marble for it to transfer into. So this marble starts to move with the kinetic energy in the same direction that we, that we pushed the first marble. And that's also why it works when we have two marbles. I push two marbles and this first marble is gonna hit this one and the energy is gonna move until it doesn't have anything else to move into and this marble rolls. Well, as that's happening, this marble hits the second one, which hits the third, which hits the fourth. And now, because this one is already moving, the fourth one is gonna move with it. So uh, lots of the things we've talked about regarding energy apply here as well. And thank you so much for joining me this week for Science From Home. We'll hope to see you next week. Have a great afternoon.